Well guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. I got an awesome um, project here in the shop. I've had this in the shop for a while now, but I've been working on this Oliver 550 and I love it. I've been having a lot of fun with it, but I kind of need a little bit of a break right now from it. And so um, I thought, you know what? I need a vise over on that side of the shop, a good quality, heavier duty vise. I've got a small Colombian over there, um, just but it's just a three inch vise. So I needed something just a little bit heavier built on the automotive side of the shop. I've got several vices on this side of the shop, but just not a lot on the other side. And so this, this vice here I got um, several months ago from a guy and um, I'm super thrilled about it. It's in outstanding condition. Now, th if you don't know, this is, um, if you're not familiar with the swivel jaw vices, this isn't just a swivel base, okay? This is a swivel jaw. So you pull this pin. My pin's got a little little bit out on it here, but we'll get that fixed. And you just you swivel that jaw right there. And um, they're just fantastic. I love them. Um, they're they're kind of rare. You don't see them all over the place. And this one is a w just wickedly heavy duty vice. And uh, so I'm super excited about it. It is a Morgan number three four five on the side here and on this side it says morgan vice company chicago illinois so i sent this i took a picture of this and i sent it to the um, morgan vice company which is was bought out by milwaukee and um, milwaukee asked me for more detailed pictures because they didn't have this vice in, in their records and they hadn't seen that insignia um, as well. So anyways, that kind of was neat in that it was maybe just a little bit more rare, but the vice is in really good condition. It didn't take, this, was, this pin didn't want to come out when I first bought it, but honestly, it took just a little bit of tapping and it, and it came right out. The guy that I bought it from, again, they almost never know that the vise has a swivel jaw. They don't understand what the pin is for. Um, they think it sit there and it's, you know, it's something to hammer on. Um, he had no idea that it pivoted, uh, which is pretty typical every time I've ever bought one of these. It's got very um, sharp edges on the slide. Everything's real good. I am missing one jaw. And so, um, you know, I've had, this, I've had this vise for several months. And so what I did is I, I went to a machine shop and I just asked them to make me up a new jaw. And um, just one. Now they didn't knurl it. And I told them that's perfectly fine. I've got one knurled side and it'll be one smooth side. And um, honestly, I can live with that. The, um, the way this tapers in is just a little bit different, but um, I don't think that'll affect it in, in any way. So let's get cracking. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with this. I, I'm... I think I want to paint it for sure, just to protect it. I'll probably do a little bit of welding on this pin just to shore that little section up that's been um, chipped. And um, so I don't know, we're, we're gonna take it fully apart. We'll get it all apart, let's clean it. And then um, we'll paint it, put it all back together. So that's the plan. Let's take the slide off. any movement that's when you know you're at the end it's a big heavy slide let's get the base apart it feels like it's loose enough and a washer and they look to be in excellent condition all right so there we are that also looks to be in really good shape again no bends or anything on this it looks really really good all right that lifts off so there's our top half huh. I've not seen that before that's that's a little bit different it slides around in there and it's got some ridges in there but it's only able to come out in one spot and that is right here so Screw. If 
fairly substantial set screw. Things should pull. There you go. And there's our collar. All right, I hope that's not too odd of an angle for you. Okay, well, pin moving so easy. I'm there you go, and there you go. That gives you a good look at uh, your innards. I've got a pin here, and you can see that pin there, and there's my nut. Little movement in your nut is not a big deal, okay? Not any anywhere else on this vise. So you don't even have to hit it with a hammer. This thing's coming apart like butter. Well guys, we're gonna go ahead and um, use a sandblaster on these parts. A buddy of mine let me use this, and I've never used a sandblaster before. So um, he swears by it, says it's a whole lot better than wire wheeling. And so I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, I am gonna try to stay away from my machine surfaces. Not that I think it would be detrimental if I hit that very mildly with a little sandblaster, but I am just gonna avoid the machined areas that um, normally wouldn't get um, sanded on a whole lot or anything like that. So I'll just try to stick to the, um, the non-machine parts. So I've got a, uh, a little hood here that he suggested I buy, a sandblasting hood, and then I've got a respirator as well. So I'm going to put that on, and then I'll make some adjustments here to this. Again, I've never done it before, so it's going to take me probably a little bit to get this dialed in. Um, but once I do, I think I'll, I'll get some good video of this. Well, I thought the sandblasting did a really nice job. You got it down to clean metal. I even hit some of these machine surfaces very lightly. You can see, still see the machining marks are still there, but um, it really did a good job. Nice, clean, sharp edges. <clears throat> Here's my base. Now I've got some flash rusting. You can see just a little yellowing. And I'm finding a simple steel brush. I'm finding will take care of the flash rusting that you see sometimes on that happens with these. I'm gonna be using my TIG welder on this pin. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that. And uh, I'll show you how I'll do that here in a minute. Let's weld up this, and I may take the TIG welder to some of this as well. You can clearly see a nice big old chip out of there and a little crack through it. So we're gonna TIG weld that. And um, I really don't wanna have to try to figure out how to grind that flat on the back side of that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some aluminum coupons that I have. We're gonna stick these right in here. And so what that'll do is that'll give me a flat back here. 
And um, they're gonna be kind of tight, so I'll have to tap them in with that little hammer you see on the right. But um, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tap these in. I've got the pin and the little welding vise that I keep on my table. And uh, we'll see if we can't weld that up. And we'll probably get a little bit of weld right there. Then we'll take it over to the two by 72. So I'm not sure how I'll set you up um, to see this, but I'll do my best. Well, guys, you've heard the term chasing your tail. That's kind of what I would call this right here. It's still pretty hot. The whole whole thing was sitting on the stove. So I'll give you a little bit of a look at that. So basically, I just wanted to weld up a few little, look like maybe chisel marks or something. But this cast does not want to weld well at all. Now, I've welded on other vices that welded real good. This is not one of them. So, <clears throat> don't know if all Morgans are like that, but this one did not want to weld. So, now what I'll do is I'm gonna take the sandblaster and I'm gonna sandblast this area here, just to kind of give it that same kind of patina look. And then my paint should cover everything. Here's the pin, it turned out real nice. It's still a bit warm as well. You can see the section that I uh, had to repair. All right, guys, so I can go in ahead and hit that with the sand blaster. So now I gotta clean everything up again and wipe her down, then I'm gonna mask. I'll just put a light coat on initially, just to get my, my base kind of on there. I think I will put a little cotton little piece of cloth inside my hole, just so I don't collect a bunch of paint inside there. Well guys, while the paint is drying, I've got this piece of plate steel. I think it's 3 8 inch thick. And um, I just used, just took the paper uh, that was underneath the vise when I painted it. It's over there drying across the shop now. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, mount it in a way that um, it's sturdy, obviously, because it's a pretty big rugged vise but um, I'd also like to extend it beyond my bench. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you look at the reed vise that um, we restored some time ago, oh, it's been over a year probably. Uh, I'll try to leave a link um, up here so you can see it, but um, if you haven't watched it. But anyways, this extension right here, so let me show you this. So we've extended this off my bench. So it's bolted here and here to the bench. And then this cantilever's out. And that, sorry, I interrupted my own talking by hitting a button and shutting the camera off. So this is a very, very handy um, setup, extending it beyond the bench like that. If you look at it, the the jaws, I mean, you can put stuff in and going all the way to the floor if you need to. It's just very handy when you're working on it. You can get kind of right around the bench. Let me flip. So this is what I'm trying to, to show you. 
you can get right into the the vise and right up against your bench top when that thing's kind of extended out a little bit. And so it really does make it handy. And so I'd like to do that with this vise here. So taking this piece of steel, I'm gonna use the plasma cutter. I'll cut right there. This is just 12 inches by, I don't know, whatever this is, 18 or so. And then what I'll do is um, I'm going to shape the front half of this just like the vise. So I'll cut this out and then I'll trace around it. And then um, that way it's kind of like this one here where the front is, takes on the shape of the vise C. And so I'll do the same so thing. I'll just cut this stuff out right here and then I'm just gonna trace these ears I'll do it that way. Just going to use a little hammered bron dark bronze paint that really won't change the color of it a whole lot but um, it'll give it some protection for rust just putting a light coat on it right now so this is where it's going to be i'm going to sink some three and a half inch or a three and a quarter inch screws into this there's framing underneath this and that's why at these locations that's why it's going that's why the screws are going where they're going and then of course i'll use some bolts right here i've already got that hole drilled so now let's put the vise back together and uh, we can get it in place i'll go ahead and put some screws in this and screw it down to the bench There's with the screws all in place. the jaw after being hardened. I quenched it in canola oil. Let's put our screw in. Not greased anything up. All I've done here is I've mixed grease and gear oil. And the reason I did that is because I feel like grease is just too thick and gear oil is just too thin. So I just made a combination of the two. 
that hopefully will do the trick. So I'm gonna go to the thinner stuff and if I need to, I can wipe it off, wipe off the excess. But you can see this, this is quite a bit different than just regular grease. Um, even though that's what it is, it's just grease that's been diluted with some gear oil. do is just give that thing a little pounding right there as it's up against it and I've got a long there it is and boy that feels really thick though maybe after I've used the thinner stuff it feels too thick to me so I can put such a thinner layer on with this really like that. Got it. That's more like it. Use the shop a bit, guys. Things are pretty messy right now. In the middle of a pretty big project here with this Oliver tractor. If you haven't been following along and that stuff interests you, by all means, take a look at some of my other videos. So now we'll put on the jaws. I do think I'll put the serrated jaw or the knurled jaw on the back side because as someone approaches the vise I don't want them thinking that it's a smooth jaw vise if someone were to step into the shop and use it so let me just back this other jaw off a little bit give me a little bit of room to put the screws in here Okay guys, well, off camera, I took a minute to go ahead and true these jaws up. Uh, I just didn't like the not being even across and, and on the sides. It's still got just a little bit, but I'd have to take a little off of this one at this point to get that perfect, and it's near perfect. Now it is almost perfect on the other side, but this side just a little, I mean, and then I'm talking, it's just a little, you can just catch your finger on it. The top is just near perfect. So it's good. Now I am going to add a washer. I know that it didn't have a washer on it um, right here on the locking mechanism, but you know, grinding this thing into the casting there is uh, it just creates more resistance. It really needs to have a washer. So we're going to do that. There we go. Well, we got her done, guys. I'm super, super thrilled to have this vise in the shop now, particularly where it's at on this side of the shop. Um, so let's talk about the vise just a little bit. It's a Morgan uh, Model 345. <clears throat> it didn't come with two, two jaws. It only came with one, so I had to have one made up. By the way, where I grind it at, um, obviously it made that metal silver again, and so I just used some gun bluing super blue from Birchwood um, gun bluing uh, to try, try to get that thing um, more of the darker color that I was looking for to try to match it up a little bit with this other um, jaw. So um, 
Let's talk about it a little bit and talk about some of its features. For one, it's a massive vise. Let me grab a, oh, here we go, tape measure. The jaws are only four and a half inches. So not massively wide, but it is a big vise. It is 12 inches tall from the end of the slide to the end of the handle is 19 inches. It is a big, massive, heavy duty vise. It has a swivel base. And the thing that really, really makes this vise special is right here, that pin. That, vice, that makes this vice really special. So let me show you what that does. <clears throat> I get this every time I have a, um, a swivel jaw. So that's what this is called, a swivel jaw. So you guys seen the, the steel shaft that goes up in there. By the way, that's pinned in there. I've, I've colored, <clears throat> I've painted over the pin. But if you needed to, you could knock that, <clears throat> that pin out of there and replace that. So when you're, when you're, need to clamp something like this and it's tapered so it's not parallel what happens when it's not parallel when it's tapered like this is here so the jaws on this particular vise being that they're it, it's a swivel jaw it'll find the correct angle on that. and a lot of people think you got to find the angle you don't the vise will find the angle for you so I don't know how well let me see if I can get you. So you see how that works? So that, that bites on that thing extremely well. I mean, there's no moving that. Not until you loosen that jaw up. So. So that's a super, super awesome feature on this. Um, you just don't see swivel jaw vices very often, and when you do, like I've said before, most guys don't have a clue what they are, and most of them are stuck. This one really wasn't stuck. <clears throat> now, what I've done is I mounted it off the bench some. Uh, a couple reasons I, I used this plate and did this. One, I have the reed vise across the shop in the welding area, and it's extremely handy, and it's probably only three inches off the vise or off the bench. This here, you know, it's, it's a full five inches off just the lip of this bench. And then if you get out into the handle, I mean, the handle's 10 and a half inches out here. So it's really nice. I can put longer items through the vise. I can go all the way to the floor if I, if I need to on them. Um, but it also, more than anything, I think what helps me with the reed vise is being able to be right up on the vise and, and it not being kind of tucked back in here. It helps me, you know, my back, um, like a lot of guys my age, you know, I get back pain and this really, really helps me a lot. And it's just more comfortable to um, work on um, when I'm tootling around with the vise. So uh, really, really handy. This is 3 8 inch plate. It's extremely strong. Um, I've got it screwed to this. I went ahead and painted this. I used a um, hammered paint for that. I think a dark bronze and then a, a hammered copper paint for this. And so now let's, um, let's walk you around the vise a little bit and give you just a little bit closer view of the vise. All right, guys, so on the handle and on the pin, I did sandblast these just ever so slightly. I even sandblasted the handle, which I originally thought I would not do, but I found that I could control that sandblaster so well and not overdo it. So I just put a real soft blast on it, and then I used some steel wool and some um, boiled linseed oil and that really brought it out. I mean, it really made it kind of satiny. If you remember this pin, we had to weld on this pin because it had a pretty good chunk out of that top. So it turned out pretty nice. Um, so 
So yeah, and again, it, it get, has that kind of a satiny finish from the sandblasting. Now, and it's not rough. I used a piece of steel wool on all the things that I sandblasted just to kind of smooth them out. So it's actually very smooth, but it has that, that kind of a satin look to it. It's really cool looking. And then I've used some anisees inside there just so that pin doesn't lock up on us. And then everything else I've just coated with a very light coat of oil. And of course I, I oiled and greased the the lead screw. So there's that modeled paint. Give you a look down here. The thing with the Morgan Vices is they, it's extremely heavy duty, but the precision isn't to the level of the Charles Parkers or the Reeds. Now I may eventually paint those letters I used a, um, I used an appliance paint on this, and that's why it's somewhat see-through. It's supposed to be kind of a ceramic coating, and I really wanted to make sure I protected that, and so that's kind of why I did that. Now the pin, that pin is what keeps the swivel jaw vise from being able to pull out. I will eventually probably paint that, um, probably. Maybe not, I may leave it. It's not bothering me any, so you see, Nobody abused this slide. That's great. They didn't use it as as a anvil. So, anyways, guys, the um, does have a swivel base. So, if the guy needed to, you need to spin that vice. You can spin it. Spins real nice and it seems to lock up pretty good. Now, again, I don't think it has the precision of the Reeds or the Charles Parkers, but still pretty darn nice. There's a look at the model number. So guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this vice restoration. I haven't done one in quite some time. But I really enjoyed this one, and um, and that's probably how I'll kind of park the vise, sitting there kind of like that, so it's not out in the room as much. Give you a little bit of a look here. Say hi to Bucky. Hey, Bucky. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right. Guys, I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been a help and a blessing to you. Uh, God willing, I'll see you on the next video.